Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The arrival of the space age in the 1950s has brought with it the development of multiple technologies that have allowed efficient and long-lasting space flights. Since then, Advances in engineering have resulted in better propulsion systems and innovative solutions for new missions. NASA's Artemis III mission to the Moon, SpaceX mission to Mars, and the rocket research from United Launch Alliance are just some examples of such space developments. Of these rocket technologies and designs, the most well-known and historically notable are those provided by NASA. These powerful rockets are designed and created at the Michoud Assembly Facility, which has been America's rocket factory for over 50 years. Located in New Orleans, on land originally owned by the Michoud family, it was purchased by the U.S. government in the 1930s and, since the end of the Korean War, has been used for the aerospace manufacturing industry. Dr. Werner Von Braun of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center saw the facility's value for the burgeoning space program, with NASA officially acquiring the property on September 7, 1961. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. With the creation of the Apollo program, the MAF was tasked to manufacture the first stages of rockets for the Apollo missions, including the Saturn I, IB, and fifth stages used in the Apollo 11 moon landing mission. This required expanding facilities to support this function, including constructing additional buildings, an 18-story vehicle assembly building, and the Michoud Slip for maritime transport. Just as NASA has explored various technologies to create its vehicles, you can also explore multiple battle vehicles with War Thunder. As the most comprehensive vehicle combat game, you can select over 2,500 war machines, from tanks and planes to helicopters and ships from multiple eras since the early 20s. You can use the link in the description below to sign up. An incredible bonus pack for all new players. This includes premium vehicles, the exclusive vehicle decorator Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, and seven days of a premium account. Here, you can share those immersive experiences with the worldwide community of over 70 million players in epic PvP battles today and feel like a brilliant general. After the Apollo program ended, MAF became the manufacturing site for the Space Shuttle's external tanks. It supported the shuttle program for almost 40 years, being an important part of missions, like deploying the Hubble telescope and serving the International Space Station. Currently, the MAF is involved in the Artemis missions by manufacturing the core stages for SLS rockets and the Orion spacecraft. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Seven. 
This new program aims to restore human presence on the moon for the first time since the Apollo 17 lunar mission in 1972. Being a critical part of the Artemis program for the crewed missions to the moon and eventually to send astronauts to Mars, the core stages required a detailed development and manufacturing procedure at the MAF. These stages are necessary to provide the primary thrust needed to propel the Orion spacecraft, astronauts, and supplies beyond Earth's orbit. For this reason, its design consists of five main structures. The forward skirt to house the flight avionics, the liquid oxygen tank, the liquid hydrogen tank, the intertank that connects both fuel tanks, and the engine section that has the propulsion system and engines. The forward skirt structure is manufactured from welded panels, to which all systems, such as the redundant inertial navigation unit, are installed. Hi. Aluminum alloy panels are used for most of the tanks and intertank sections, which are then joined using friction stir welding that does not require completely melting the metal pieces to merge them. The connection between the tanks is done through machined rings with one one thousandth of an inch tolerance. Each section must pass through a series of functional inspections, like waterproof testing and pneumatic pressurization testing to ensure the structure behaves as intended. When the liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen tank sections are complete, they are sent to the vertical assembly center to be fully assembled. Thermal protection closeouts and installation of covers and fairings are the final steps before the core stage is shipped to Kennedy Space Center for stacking with the rest of the SLS components. This dedication to the design and construction of these components demonstrates the importance of this program for NASA and its focus on the development of space exploration. The Space Launch System started its development in 2011 after the retirement of the Space Shuttle and the cancellation of the Ares-1 and Ares-5 launch vehicles. Its main purpose is to launch the partially reusable Orion spacecraft, designed by Lockheed Martin and the European Service Module for lunar missions. To achieve this, the SLS uses solid rocket boosters, similar to those used for the space shuttle the core liquid stage propelled by the powerful RS-25 engines, and an upper stage using the RL-10 engine. All these components are integrated to send more than 59,000 pounds to the moon for the Artemis I mission. However, NASA is just one of several agencies and companies that have set out to develop and improve the aerospace industry. One of these many is Mitsubishi's Nagoya Aerospace Systems, which is considered one of the most important in this field. This company designs and manufactures expendable launch systems especially their H-2A, H-2B, and H-3 rockets within their plants in Oi and Tubashima. Both versions of the H-2 are high-performance rockets consisting of a first stage, second stage, 
fairing and one or two pairs of solid rocket boosters. This family of boosters has been an important piece of the Japanese space launch industry since 2001. On the other hand, the third type of rocket, the H-3, is a system under development to be Japan's new flagship rocket, meeting the global launch service demands for a wide range of payloads. To manufacture the body and other structures of the rockets, the company uses aluminum alloys thanks to their lightness, ease of forming, and relatively low cost especially compared to titanium and composites. 5 8 inch thick plates are normally used for the manufacturing process. However, they are machined into a sheet with stiffeners that form equilateral triangles, also known as an isogrid structure. This is done to ensure the material is capable of resisting the enormous loads and vibrations that can be generated by a rocket. The isogrid panels are filled with a low melting wax to prepare them for the rolling forming process. This allows the bending force to be distributed throughout the structure during rolling making it stable and reducing the possibility of forming a regular skin and buckling of the ribs. After rolling, the wax is melted at temperatures beyond 140 degrees Fahrenheit and is washed away by inserting the panels into a water tank. Then the panels are joined to form the fuel tank using friction stir welding to keep the strength of the isogrid structure. An LE7A engine fed to the liquid hydrogen and oxygen fuel distribution system is used to power the rockets. To manufacture an engine of this type, the company uses advanced materials such as titanium or a nickel super alloy due to their ability to withstand the enormous temperatures generated by the combustion process. This new engine was developed based on its predecessor, but focused on using more cast and machine components rather than welded. Once the engine has been manufactured, the company moves it into a test facility to perform an acceptance test. This test evaluates the correct assembly and performance of the engine so that it can be considered proper for mass production. Here, the rocket is placed horizontally and connected to a multitude of sensors to measure its combustion rate, temperature, and thrust. With all the rocket components prepared, they must be transported to the launch site. For this, the rocket is encapsulated within protective fairings or containers to shield it from the marine environment during transportation. The rocket stages are then loaded onto a cargo vessel to be sent to the nearest port. Where the cargo is translated to heavy trucks that travel the remaining route to the launching site. Once there, the engineers start mounting the stages vertically, from the engines up to the payload stage, using crane systems.
considering its large size. The rocket is transported to the launch pad using a crawler transporter, a heavy-duty tracked vehicle that can carry enormous loads. Final inspections are made to every stage, including the top of the rocket where the satellites are located, ending with the countdown and launching it to outer orbit. The development of space rocket technology has demonstrated the desire to expand and improve space exploration. These new designs and future creations lead to more ambitious projects and missions to further destinations. War Thunder. Play it now for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. You can use the link in the description below to sign up. An incredible bonus pack on PC or consoles is at the hand for all new players and those who haven't played in six months. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.